All right. So in this same paper by Michael Jordan, they also introduced something called rescaled gradient flow. Rescaled gradient flows. And as I said, gradient normalization is important. So this rescaled gradient flow was actually scaling the gradient. So the dynamical system looked something like this. So usually for simple gradient flow, we would we would have x dot is negative of gradient of f in the, so in rescaled gradient flow, this turns out to be this divided by the norm of the gradient raised to the power p minus 2 over p minus 1 with p greater than equal to p greater than strictly greater than 2 ok. So first of all is the dynamical system clear to everyone? So this dynamical system has the same equilibrium as the uh, simple gradient flow right x equal to x star I mean again in this case the bo in both cases it vanishes at x equal to x star. So it has the same equi equilibrium as, uh, as simple gradient flow. Not just that the trajectory followed by x is exactly the same as the trajectory followed by so this is just like rescaling the flow like how quickly you traverse the trajectory but the trajectory stays the same. So x is a function of time changes but the phase portrait of x that remains the same ok. So you are just traversing the trajectory much faster than uh, uh, than simple gradient flow. It will be exactly the same in continuous time the moment you discretize then it I mean you cannot say. So in fact if I just normalize it with respect to the norm of the gradient that becomes a unit velocity vector field. So that means the, it, the velocity changes but it that I mean the trajectory that, that states the same ok. So for this particular rescale gradient flow uh, so Michael Jordan's group they showed that this convergence rate is order 1 over t to the p. And if you choose p to be very large, you can practically make it converge much faster, right. So that is the idea. But in order to prove this result, again they use some like the Bregman, uh, Bregman divergence. So we are going to use Lyapunov theory and we are going to show something remarkable here. We are in fact going to show that this converges in some in finite time. The same rescale gradient flow, not just 1 over t to the p, in a finite time capital T it will converge to the equilibrium. So, is the setup clear to everyone? So this is R, so let me denote this by RGF. This P greater than 2 is important and we will also look at why it is important. But this essentially sort of uh, is a good departure for us to look at something called finite time or fixed time stability. Fine. It's it's holder continuous at zero. Yeah, I mean, as in like at x star, essentially. I mean, the, it's holder continuous everywhere else. It's smooth. It's holder continuous at x star, but it's not non-smooth, non-smooth per se. It's holder continuous that way. So usually, when you when you def, define these kind of dynamical system, you would say that when gradient of f is greater than zero, norm is greater than zero, then you run this. Otherwise, x dot is equal to zero. So that's how you can typically define. And when in practice, when you implement this you add a small epsilon in the denominator so that there is numerical stability uh, when you implement this in discrete time but here. Yeah. So this gives rise to two concepts one is finite time stability and the other is fixed time stability of equilibrium points. So finite time stability uh, how many of you know uh, Sanjay Bhatt or heard of Sanjay Bhatt? So he was a faculty here till 2007 in aerospace. He is now at uh, TCS research but finite time stability was a seminal contribution uh, in, during his PhD thesis in 98 I think. So and this fixed time stability is a generalization of finite time stability and this was proposed by Polyakov very recently in fact in 2012. And the idea is with finite time stability, so if I consider the same. set up here. So 
So, you start in some ball around the uh, let us say equilibrium. So, with finite time stability you are guaranteed to converge to the equilibrium in a finite amount of time t, but this time t is going to be dependent on your initial condition x naught. Okay. So, this t is called settling time or settling time function because it is a function of x naught right. So, settling time function. and t x naught is in fact finite. So, strictly and what do we have? So, if origin is the equilibrium then for every t greater than equal to t x naught we have that norm of or that not just norm x t is equal to 0 for all t greater than this particular time if origin is the equilibrium. I mean if x star is the equilibrium then it would be x t equal to x star for all. So, what is fixed time then? So, Polakov generalized this result and showed that with fixed time convergence, so t x naught is independent of x naught. So, that means you get initialization independent bound on how quickly you can converge. So, let us call this capital T now because it is independent of uh, x naught initial condition and Polakov showed that uh, there exists a fixed time t where independent of the initial condition for every t greater than equal to t x t is equal to 0 for all x naught. So, no matter where you start you are guaranteed to converge to the optimal solution or in this case the equilibrium uh, in a fixed amount of time. In the finite time stability case you are guaranteed to converge again in a finite amount of time but that amount of time that time depends on the initial condition. So, if you are farther from the equilibrium you may require larger time to converge, but that is not the case with uh, fixed time stability where you even if you are farther away from the equilibrium you, are, you would still converge to the equilibrium in a fixed amount of time. So, how does these results uh, first of all have a Lyapunov characterization. So, let us let us look at Lyapunov characterization of finite time stability to get, get, get a sense of what this finite time stability is about. So, we are now going to look at Lyapunov characterization of finite time stability. So, remember when we had v dot less than equal to some let us say v dot is less than equal to negative v. So, we said that v converges exponentially fast, but x we cannot say anything about x right. So, this talks about exponential convergence of v. So, let us look at a different let us say if I arrive at a different kind of inequality and I say v dot is less than equal to v to the alpha, alpha with alpha less than 1. Okay. So, let us say we arrive at this kind of uh, inequality on time derivative. Okay. So, let us see what this what does this mean. So, that is Okay, so that's so. What is the integral of this term? One over one minus alpha, right? Okay, which basically gives us v t raised to the 1 minus alpha is less than equal to uh, v naught 1 minus alpha minus. So, v is a Lyapunov function what do we know about the Lyapunov function? Positive definite positive definite positive semi definite whatever, but at least we know that this is always greater than equal to 0 right. So, for this to be greater than equal to 0 this is an increase like so this this is a constant here as t keeps on increasing there would be a point when this term is equal to this term right. So, that means this is the point where your Lyapunov function touches 0 right because Lyapunov function
Yeah, but x is a function of t. So, I mean you can have an explicit function of time or you need not even have an explicit function of time. The point is that this, with this particular inequality implies that there would be some point after which this, this right hand side starts becoming negative, right. And because your Lyapunov no function cannot be negative, so this is going to be valid only for time t. So, this t, let us say this, so there exists some time, let us call this t x naught which is a finite time such that v naught 1 minus alpha is equal to 1 minus alpha times t x naught right or t x naught is equal to. So, your x naught kind of shows up in your v naught definition in the at the point where you start you get the initial condition for the Lyapunov function right or initial value. So, that is why you see the dependence is on the initial condition, but we know that for all t greater than equal to t x naught your first of all your Lyapunov function is going to be 0 that means you are going to be at the equilibrium and you are guaranteed to arrive at the equilibrium in time t less than capital T x less than equal to capital T x naught. So, that means you have converged in a finite amount of time if you can show that there exists a Lyapunov function which satisfies this inequality. Okay. So, in fact, this is the characterization of fixed time stability of equilibrium of finite time stability of equilibrium and so, so this is the this is inequality that, that your Lyapunov function need to satisfy. So, your v of x greater than equal to 0 is strictly greater than 0 when x is not equal to x star and v dot is less than equal to negative v raised to the alpha with alpha less than 1 so, that is the condition for finite time stability. And not just that this alpha plays a role why because you can also characterize the settling time function in terms of this right. So, your settling time function or you can rather say that your settling time is also upper bounded by uh, v naught one or let me just write it here v of x naught 1 minus alpha ok. So, this is true if I mean if x star is finite time stable then this is true right ok. So, this basically gives us idea as to well I mean the choice of Lyapunov function is fine. But this basically tells us how to design this these kind of modified gradient flows. So, now let us try to reanalyze this uh, rescale grade, gradient flow, but instead of using Bregman divergence as was done in the original paper, we will try to use this particular result on finite time stability of a uh, finite time stability right. So, let us do that. No, as long as v is continuous the settling time because it is I mean you get a upper bound directly in terms of v naught right. So, the settling time function is going to be continuous uh, for finite time stability for fixed time stability anyway it is it is independent of the initial condition. So, the, the question of continuity does not even show up there. So, we have this rescale gradient flow here right. Now, let us choose the I mean as I said like the choice of Lyapunov function that does not wait change by much. So, so we assume f is mu strongly convex ok. So, v I can choose to be half ok that does not change by much and that does not change at all. So, v dot turns out to be gradient f transpose hessian f times x dot and that is now we are going to be using the RGF or the rescale gradient flow for x dot right. So, this becomes with p greater than 2 
okay just from rgh right the scale gradient flow now because this is strongly convex f is strongly convex hessian of f is lower bounded by mu times identity so i can write this as negative mu divided by the same term okay is everyone with me on this why because since hessian of f is from a strong convexity and this is basically equal to negative mu gradient of f times 2 minus p minus 2 minus 1 okay which is equal to negative mu okay which again I'm, I'm not done because I need to write v dot in terms of v right less than equal to some v, v raised to the alpha and v by definition is this particular thing. So, what I do is minus mu okay which is minus mu now if, if p is greater than 2 what is the value of p over 2 2 times p minus 1 let's say p is equal to 2.5 so this this term is always less than 1 so for p greater than 2 I mean, by the way this alpha is not just less than 1 it is also supposed to be greater than 0 ok. So, which means we have shown that v dot is less than equal to mu and since this is this term is less than 1. So, therefore, x star is finite time stable and what is the settling time function t t of x naught turns out to be v of x naught raised to the power 1 minus alpha where alpha is so choose alpha is equal to 1 minus alpha divided by this constant term here which is min which is mu times 2 to the alpha times 1 minus alpha. Okay, this is your cyclic time function. So, not only you show that this converges in a finite amount of time, it converges, it converges uh, in a finite amount of time, which is also which you can also characterize. So, remember in the earlier case when of exponential stability, we could only say that v converge v, v converges exponentially fast, but x need not converge exponentially fast. But why can we say because right now the, this inequality is in terms of v and not in terms of x right. Why can we say that x converges uh, in finite time because this says that v converges in finite time right or can we conclude that x also converges in finite time from here. Okay. Yeah because v is 0 only when x is equal to 0. So, because v has converged in finite time that means v has converged exactly to 0 v of x star is exactly equal to 0. So, that means x has converged to x star in a finite time whereas that was not the case earlier when with exponential stability I mean we still talk about v converging to v of v converging to 0 exponentially fast, but v can be an arbitrary function of x right and that may that may not converge exponentially fast. In this case even if it is an arbitrary function because v of 0 becomes v of t becomes exactly equal to 0. So, that means x of t is also exactly equal to 0 or x star is this clear. So, the same result that uh, that was shown in Jordan's uh, work to be order like order 1 over t to the p kind of convergence you in fact using the simple Lyapunov theory you can get 
uh, finite time convergence, right? So it's, it's a much bigger result than like, uh, so in order to show that uh, this converges arbitrarily fast, like, like using their analysis, you would have to choose where P which is very large, right? So that this particular term becomes very small, so you get very fast convergence. But if you use a similar, use for the same dynamical system, if you use different tools, you can show that it's actually much better. I mean, you can in fact guarantee a convergence in a finite amount of time. Okay. So how does uh, this result extend to, like how can we generalize this to fixed time stability case? So, so for finite time stability, we knew that v dot is less than or equal to some c1 v to the alpha 1, where c1 is greater than 0 and alpha 1 is a number between 0 and 1. With this, you can guarantee finite time, finite time stability, right, of the equilibrium. If you want to guarantee fixed time stability, you would have to look add another term to it with alpha 2 greater than 1 and c2 greater than 0. So, if that is the case, then you actually can show that this is fixed time stable. Not just finite time stable, the equilibrium is, the equilibrium is fixed time stable. So that means no matter where you start, you are guaranteed to converge to the equilibrium in a fixed amount of time. And that settling time function t, it's actually, now it's not a function of x naught, right? It, it's, it's independent of x naught. That's actually upper bounded by 1 over c1, 1 minus alpha 1 plus 1 over c2, alpha 2 minus 1. This is the settling time. Okay. So, what is the difference? So, how is this particular thing able to guarantee finite time convergence versus why is the other term at like intuitively, why is this the other term able to guarantee fixed time convergence? So, let us see what happens when we look at this particular thing, right? So, when v is very large or let us say when v is, the, when, when norm of v or the value of v is actually less than or equal to 1. By choosing a, like by exponentiating it to alpha, which is a number between 0 and 1, you are making it bigger, right? You are making it bigger. So, even when the rate of decrease is actually getting smaller and smaller, you are sort of uh, scaling this up using v raised to the alpha. So, the moment you hit that unity ball, v equal to 1, right? After that, you are, unlike the exponential convergence case, you are actually scaling things up and that, that is actually leading to faster convergence. But we do not care of, we do not take care of what happens outside that unity ball with this, right? In fact, you are sort of slowing it somewhat. But we still get finite time con convergence because we know that the convergence kind of, once you, I mean the convergence is kind of slow, only cl uh, closer to the optimal solution, right? So, there you are scaling things up and that basically helps you with faster convergence or in this case finite time convergence. In case of this particular condition. You have one term to scale things up when you are inside the unit ball, but because alpha 2 is greater than 1, you actually scaling, you scale things up when you are outside that unit ball, right? So, you converge to the unit ball faster, first of all, and then once you converge to the unit ball, then you converge to the uh, optimal solution or the equilibrium faster because of this term. So, these two different terms, they actually have a role at different regimes. So, if you start somewhere like farther away from the equilibrium, you would have this term. Uh, basically contributing towards the decrease of the Lyapunov function. The moment you hit the unit ball, this term starts dominating the other term and that is when you would have, you would see that this term would guarantee finite. So, you converge with the unit ball in a finite amount of time, you now once you are in the unit ball, you again converge in a finite amount of time. So, in, in summary, you basically converge in a fixed amount of time independent of the initialization. Now, how does this translate to designing the algorithm? So, so far before the rescale gradient flow, we were analyzing the algorithms that were already known to us, be it gradient flow or Newton's method and things like that, right? Rescale gradient flow was a way to somehow uh, engineer a different kind of gradient flow that can show faster convergence, right? So, let us look at another rescale gradient flow or another 
gradient flow similar to rescale gradient flow. But this time our objective is to be able to guarantee fixed time convergence right and not just finite time. So, as I said we did not change much in terms of the Lyapunov function right, Lyapunov function was still the same. So, either you change the algorithm or you change your Lyapunov function so that it satisfies that inequality right. So, we are going to keep the Lyapunov function as it is, but then we need to be designing our algorithm differently and now we are going to be using. So, earlier this was the algorithm ok. Now, I am adding another term to it. Why? Because I want to get that kind of result with my Lyapunov function v. With p greater than 2 and q is a number between 1 and 2. So, without this second term, we had already shown finite time stability or finite time convergence. With this other term, the reason we added this other term is because we want to get this kind of inequality on the Lyapunov function and with just one term that is not possible right. So, that also gives you an idea just by looking at what you want to prove or what kind of results or tools that you have it also gives you an idea as to how you can modify your existing uh, existing dynamical system right. And if I really look at this dynamical system from the perspective of gradient normalization that is nothing but and you normalize this by p minus 2 or p minus 1. Yes. So, this is the normalization factor here in the bracket and what you are basically running is again a gradient descent, but you are just normalizing the gradient ok. So, let us see how this guarantees uh, fixed time convergence. So, as I said we are going to be choosing the same Lyapunov function. Again we are going to be assuming that f is strongly convex. So, v dot ok and x dot we are now going to substitute this modified gradient flow. ok and this is less than equal to minus mu. If you if just following the same kind of analysis it is exactly in fact the same you get 2 v p over 2 p minus 1 minus mu 2 v q over 2 q minus 1 right. That is using the similar analysis that we followed in for fi finite time stability that is what we get. So, for the choice of p, so when p is greater than 2, it is basically a number between 0 and 1 and when q is a number between 1 and 2, you can show that you can clearly see that this particular term is actually a number which is greater than 1. Let us take uh, 1.5. So, yeah, right. So, that means what we get is v dot less than equal to some c1 v raised to the alpha 1 minus c2 v raised to the alpha 2. And that means this x basically your algorithm is or your uh, optimal solution is fixed time stable. Equilibrium is fixed time stable. So, your algorithm converges in a fixed amount of time independent of the initialization and the settling time t is upper bounded by 1 over this c 1 minus alpha 1. Okay. So, what did it require us to do? It required us to uh, actually I mean we know the result that we want to arrive at right and in the previous exercise also gave us idea as to what kind of uh, gradient normalization one can potentially use. So, if you want to accelerate this further, you can use even better normalization because we want to arrive at 
uh, this condition for fixed time stability, right? So you have to add this additional term, okay? So this kind of gives you an idea as to how one can design new algorithms, right? And this is all motivated from the kind of tools that we have, have available in continuous time, the kind of uh, stability theory analysis that one can do. And if you have that thing mapped out, then basically it also helps you not just analyze the existing algorithm, but design the new algorithms, right? So you can eventually use this continuous time, implement this in discrete time. And in fact, we have done so while in, in order to provide guarantee in discrete, discrete time is little tricky. Uh, empirically, it works much better than uh, things like Adam or RMS prop, something that you would have used in uh, for training neural networks. So, so this is again like, I mean, it's still a very active field. I mean, in fact, most of this work that you're seeing here uh, in today's lecture that has been developed in the last three to four years or five years kind of time. So it's a very active research area, but uh, it's a it's a good time to get in this particular field because I mean, uh, with with sort of LLMs and uh, um, machine learning models becoming larger and larger, you actually have to be able to uh, optimize them much faster. And these kind of tools will actually help you uh, design better and better algorithms. Okay. Uh, 